Yeah. Wild rice. Is it grass? It's a grass, yeah. It's like a grass, yeah. But we, we call it wild rice. Mandamin. Mm. Okay. Any botanical name? Uh, I forget the botanical Yeah, but it's um, a very local, good... Local name? Uh, mana, um, mandamin? Mandamin, is it? Mandamin. That's, that's corn. Mandamin is spelling. Mandamin is corn? Mandamin is corn. Corn. Oh, okay. Manomen. Minomen. Minomen. Mandamin. M. Yeah. Manomen is is rice. Men. No. Yeah. Min. M. I. N. So that's a Jibwe. Mandamin. Manomen. Are you keeping the corn seeds or are you just? Or is it for? No, it's for making popcorn. But yeah, like thousands of years ago, they made this popcorn soup at the funeral. Lab. Hey, a movie! <gasps> it's a movie again. Oh, okay. It's a movie. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to like have a background to it or something? Am I supposed to pose or are you just? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Give this. Oh. Yeah, hey, Barker's view. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you forget that sweet name? Oh, her, what is his name? Oh, yeah. Fruit it's also smudging? used to smudge. Mm -hmm. Um, to cleanse the house when or bodies. Um. Say someone has been traumatized, their their body. Um, we we have a cedar bath for them, um, and um, and and then we also wash our, our people before we we bury them in, in cedar. As a protection thing, or like a in the spirit, like a spirit world protection thing, or are, I know well, what's the symbolism or the the function of it. I'm not sure. I mean, it's just something that we were taught. And in time we find these, we just, how do you say that, we practice them and then sometimes we're given the teachings afterwards, I think that we inherit and, and also um, are given in ceremony. Like I don't question when somebody gives me a gift of ceremony. In time I find out what the purpose of the ceremony is. Eh? Mm -hmm. It is for me to practice it. It's like, uh, you know, the um, wiping of the tears ceremony. You know, you're given that ceremony to, to help you grieve, but then you don't know the, the, the you know, um, how would I say that? Why, why you're doing this? Other than it's for grief helping, and then other things will fall into place because you're you're teaching yourself. Those ancestors are teaching. Because when patriarchy came, came it, patriarchy came with colonization. It was not ours. It was we were a matriarchal people, and it doesn't mean feminism, man hating, or that we are or, or gay. It doesn't mean that. Because my partner is matriarchal. What, matriarchal is balance. It's, it's honoring um, the woman and, and Mother Earth and Grandmother Moon. And, and, it, and, and it's, it's about nurturing everything, all life, because, you know, we create life. And one elder described matriarchy as, um, this is how he described matriarchy. In your, you ask yourself, who do you love? Who loves you? You will not ever find a love from an, from anyone but your mother. Your mother. There is no love like a mother's love. You will not know any love like a mother's love. I mean, if you have a healthy mother, but if you know. But there is no other love than a mother's love. You'll know, you'll, you won't know any. So that's the kind of love that women have. We, it's, for us, it's not about, I mean, a healthy woman, women, like not, I mean, like traditional women, we're not competing with each other. <laughs> Rather, the more traditional women are um, um, empowering each other 
inspiring each other, supporting each other, loving, loving each other, nurturing each other, Yay. praying together. Um, like like women like me, I'm 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 a traditional woman in Chickadee, you know, where we we we're not like your mainstream woman. Um, we're more I guess we're more of um, the foundation of our life is spiritual. So so women who are matriarchal and have a strong spiritual foundation in their life have to be the ones to make the changes because there is a change going on um, like with the earth and with people I mean it's chaos out there um, so what do you think about the knowledge though like how to preserve it like, too like around to like the land or the land the knowledge um, we have to move back to our more traditional ways um, to to keep everything, even our even our knowledge, um, because um, and with, but depending what kind of knowledge you're you're talking about too, because I think that um, uh, mainstream school. Um, takes away the knowledge that we're supposed to know, our, our ancient knowledge, because they're teaching um, our children s things. Like I'll give you an example. Um, my 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 son, he uh, came home with this paper and he said, um, "They're telling us that we have five senses at school, but how come you said that we have nine senses?" <laughs> and I said, "Okay, well." They're 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 just limiting you, and they're telling you this is how it is when that's really not how it. Like they're not teaching you about the medicines. It's like school is colonizing our children. They're not learning the knowledge and the wisdom there. And they're keeping our children away from us all day. When when our children can learn the knowledge by go spending a day in the park and walking around the petroforms the sacred site there and and not only just you, you know each petroform has there's um, uh, I'll show you a picture of a uh, one of the petroforms um, like there's like for for one petroform there's like a story and um, millions of teachings for one petroform like here's um here's a picture of a turtle Okay, okay. And that's one of the main ones. So, there's so much teachings to a turtle, right? Like, there's like, you can go on like all day and tell you a teaching. So, one of, but one of the first teachings about the turtle is, um, is living in truth. And, 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 um, and the turtle, you know the plates on the turtle's back? Like the, the plates? The shell. The shell? It has like 13 plates. 13 plates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, in our traditional calendar, we have 13 moons. And then around the top part of the shell, with the 13 plates all around, are 28 little, all around, 28 representing like the 28 days for every moon. 28 days. Can, can you see your calendar? I don't have a traditional calendar. This is a mainstream messed up calendar. That's it. <laughs> yeah. And it, it, it messes up, you know, what we're supposed to do. Like, because every month um, we have responsibility. Can I like, repeat it that again? 13 plates. We have 13 moons. 13 moons. And there are 13. But, and that goes with natural law. Because every turtle in the world has 13 plates. Yes, yes. Go to a turtle anywhere. Pick it up. You'll see thirteen <laughs> anywhere in the world. Yeah, that's natural oh, law. Huh? Mm -hmm. Then thirteen yeah. moons. Then and we have thirteen yeah. moons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then with every moon, we have a responsibility like harvesting, planting, 
um, their ceremonies, you know, winter ceremonies, spring, summer, fall, um, feasting our, our loved ones who had passed away. So every month there we, and then that's, this is colonization. We got messed up. We've lost our, our real knowledge. So what I'm saying is that we have to go back to the traditional way, but it has to be the woman. It has to be the woman that have to take it back. And, and I'm, I've been telling everyone and, and, and sleepless nights and going crazy that now is the time. <laughs> One question I would like to ask you. Previously, that uh, matrical society means uh, the all property are inherited. Uh, in uh, line of uh, the mother in India, uh, in patriarchal, matriarchal society, property is inherited by women, by daughters. They marry their uh, maternal uncle's daughter. So property is circulated in that way. In patriarchal society, um, um, the property is inherited in male line. What is the system here? What, what, make? So in, uh, in matriarchy in India, um, any land that's held by the family gets passed down through the women instead of through the men. So if the woman the marries, if a woman marries someone, they join the, the woman's family. Whereas in the patriarchal aspects of society, then the woman would join the male's family and all the land would stay in his family. So he's asking what the system is here. I think that makes more sense. Right? That it would be with the woman. But then uh, you talk about your clan mothers and your clan grandmothers. They had roles and responsibilities too. You know, we believe that, that the ancestor is a clan mother. And uh, again, that, that role is coming back where, you know, I, I sat with the Haudenosaunee people. Mm -hmm. And they had clan mothers, clan grandmothers. And they had roles and responsibilities to the community and how to, to direct. Uh, the, the the governance of, of their community so it, it's it's um, it's been there like I said it's been put us pushed aside like by colonization and all that eh? mm -hmm. so a lot of people are not aware of these roles and responsibilities where you know they're the protectors of the culture they're protectors of the people um, protectors of, of, of the land eh? mm -hmm. Well, and traditionally, there wasn't really land ownership, was there? Which is a, one of the big differences, I think, between India and here. So traditionally here, there wasn't the concept, the idea of owning land. It was understood that the earth is the mother, and we all live because of her grace and generosity, and no human can say, I own this land. It was more like the nation, too. Like that the, is community ownership. Yeah, can be yeah, more communal. And so the community yeah. would have medicine beds or, bear, you know, know where the yeah. berries were. And, and we were nomads. Mm -hmm. We traveled. That's right. Nobody owned anything. But there were settlements, like, because I mean, archaeology also shows, like, that there were, um, like, people were growing corn in northern Manitoba thousands of years ago. What is ownership now? Individual ownership? After um, colonization? Well, the reserve system is different because reserve, like, now the only place indigenous people so-called own land are reserves. Oh, you want to know about reserves? <laughs> Can I say? That's, yeah. And we gotta go soon, sorry. Okay, I'm just gonna say this. Um, hmm? We'll go? Um, yeah, they're gonna be waiting. The reserves, us. we didn't have reserves. Um, what happened was um, when, 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 they, when, when the newcomers came here, they, they put the people onto Ow. reserves and then for each reserve they had an Indian agent and no one could leave unless they got permission. So really what reserves originated from, they were prison camps. Mm -hmm. Like concentration camps. They yeah. were prison camps. Oh, yeah. So that's where that's where oh. reserves came from. They were we were was prisoners. Yeah. And the people don't know that and they won't teach that in school either. Oh, yeah. But that's what they were. They were they were prison camps. And then from that idea what Canada and US did in creating reserves, um, yeah, Hitler used that idea. Mm. But 
his thing didn't work, but he used that idea and he made those prison camps because he got the idea to from segregate and isolate well, and control yeah. and different communities. He, so that's where that idea yeah. came from, from Canada and U.S. Yeah. when they put the Indian people onto reserves, and so that's how so, they oh, yeah, started. Mm -hmm. well, how, how do you spell your last name? M-A-Y-T-W. You're talking about matriarchy. How do you yeah. think that a matriarchal tradition could be promoted today, and in what forms would it take? How, what would that look like to have women taking more power and having more control over traditional knowledge and stuff today? How, 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 how could that happen? And Aaron, what's one concrete form that it could take? Um, well, white men will not allow it because they've been patriarchal yeah. um, for, for too long. And patriarchy, there's, there's so much fear that they'll even start wars to keep it going, patriarchy. Um, and it's just to keep everyone under and afraid. But the only way, what, what we're working on, what I'm working on, is to start, when, if you want to start something, you start with yourself, right? So I'm working on living a matriarchal life and then with the community around me, with, 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 with the other women. Um, and that, you know, we have to go back to living this way because this is our true traditional way. Mm -hmm. And there's even patriarchy in our ceremonies where, where our own men won't allow women to do certain things like, um, like, like drag the buffalo skull or pierce from their chest or mm -hmm. so, or, 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 or even like, certain ceremonies our, our men uh, so even in our that colonization came into our ceremonies too but then there's women paving the way but they're, they're but the men are getting angry at me <laughs> and chickeny and other women who are paving the way but did we have to do this because if we don't go back to matriarchy not just us the world is not going to make it. Mother Earth is not. The, I mean, people. M Mother Earth will will survive, but people, human, humans won't make human. it. There's too much destruction on Mother Earth. There's an a, an elder from Rocky Mountain Reserve in BC who was teaching a couple of, you? of uh, sessions last last year, like just kind of informal ones at the University of Winnipeg, and he was talking about the first law of nature being the law of matriarchy and that being the foundation upon which all of society has to be set up in order for things to be balanced yeah. and to work yeah and he was saying that is just exactly what you're saying that is the fundamental law of the earth we, we are the first law mm -hmm. the woman the women are the first law. Yeah. and then what makes our law so powerful is that um what happens when you're you know, if, if uh, like I was saying, that if um, to go back to matriarchy and, and, and the clan mother, clan mother system, um, the woman would have to be, um, um, I guess the woman would know who the women are to be the clan mothers. Um, and it's usually the, the strong, the, the more balanced, healthier, spiritual, woman mm -hmm. but I think in our community now we kind of know who each other is mm -hmm. and and we, we and not only that they, it, it would even come from the spiritual realm that the woman would dream of who these the, kind mothers are yeah, and, and even was it I don't know I know it's different in every nation and but often I think it would be the clan mothers would elect the chief or they would appoint you they would who are going to be the operational side of the governance kind of thing, like we're the decision-making side, but then you enact our decisions. So the is that anymore? Yeah, they would, um, they would, the woman would pick a, a, a front man, like, yeah. like I chose John. John Kent, you guys are going to go meet John. Mm. When I went Just to a meeting in, in Saging uh -huh. at the Turtle Lodge to talk about these ancestors, and I told John that he was our man <laughs> because, and he said, why me? And I said, because you're matriarchal, but also the men will listen to you because you already have respect all around you. And so, um, so I got, I, and how I saw that the matriarchy does work, um, I was talking to 
one of our women in Who's Grassy Narrows, Judy. Where's Jay? And um, Judy told me Who's to Jay? tell the men that <clears throat> we will bury the ancestors in the spring um, if they can hold off so we could find out more information. And um, so when I was talking to John, I told him that. And I said, can you let them know that this is what the woman wished to do? Wished, you know, we want to get, wait till spring to bury them. And so John told them that, and they went ahead with it. They said, okay. Hmm. But I'm, I was, but they were, they were still confused because they were doing patriarchal things, and they were all like, they were really confused. They couldn't make any decisions. That was only the only one they made. But then when I really, what I would. What I really realized was that decision was made because it came from a woman. Because it was a woman who passed it on. And then John just brought it out mm. and told the men, let's just do it in the spring. So that's how it worked. So we, it's sort of like we need like a, like a, our, our front man yeah. to speak on our behalf. But we would tell him this is what... This is what should happen, and then you go make it happen, kind of thing. Yeah. It sounds like a good. Are you guys meeting in the Turtle Lodge, or are you guys meeting at John's? That's a high school. Okay. Should people understand how things were done traditionally? It made a lot of sense. Yeah, and I mean the the, the grid system of these yeah. quarter sections and sections of land makes no sense except from a mapper perspective in Ottawa or something. I mean. You just have to based out land like the, the land that the Indians would use is from this point to the horizon that you would see under the horse's belly you know it would be something like that mm -hmm. and that's how they would measure out those land pieces so you have to read all that yeah. and spread that knowledge as well and I think that's one of the things that we're interested in doing and don't get any access to is making that information that you just shared more accessible and I guess one of the reasons that we're here today is we'd like to hear your opinions about how that can be done better. What, what are some uh, thoughts on, on how we can not only share about land ownership, but also land usage, uh, conservation of the resources of that land? Well, the biggest problem, the biggest problem we're going to face in terms of First Nation people is the need to protect their knowledge. Mm -hmm. Like uh, they want it, they probably want to share it, but they also want to protect the knowledge that they have and the medicines that they have. Like, um, a lot of uh, people have made... The, this world can be applied for future generations. Didn't they all write a book? Especially for intellectual property rights uh, and for things like patents and commercialization, this is a very important issue. So how, how does this project though, like, like because that is a concern, right? Mm -hmm. Like if people are, are saying, well, this is an area or whatever, we get our medicine, like how do you, how do you like, and if you're gonna, yeah, send that out, it's gonna be on the net well, or that's whatever. the thing, is that these registers uh, in particular that we're talking about, that Dr. Pai, they're controlled by the community, who has access to this I'll tell about how the protocols. Please, thank you. Then uh, they are uh, two components, first uh, landscape, then peoplescape. Thirdly, third uh, component will be um, ecological goods, ecological bags. What different component provide good, good component to the community? Medicine used for cancer, this is good. What is bad? Some poisonous plants that kills. Okay. Then services and disservices that will also categorize what are the services provided mm -hmm. you see aesthetical value you there is waterfall stream it uh, you use for entertainment like this okay, you have to classify that mm -hmm. then uh, that uh, you have to re reconstruct uh, the ecological history from three generations from grandfather generation you have to interview uh, the eldest member of the community. What are the ecology during grandfather generations? What are available there? Plentily, scarcely, and what? 
how it will impact on living condition, quality of life of people, and what it, how it influences the body in the ecological loss. We have to categorize in different phases. This is one. Then we have to take community needs, we will assess the community needs, their need for conservation, how they need to conserve. So we interview that they want to go back to their ma ma material culture. How they want to conserve their biodiversity. What are the conflicting interests for the people, some hydrodram project. These are, what are the conflicting how, how that affect the biodiversity. These all should be re recorded in the register. The procedure of preparing register, first, uh, formation of tax post groups. Uh, the knowledgeable persons in the community, they will be taken together with community approval. They will be trained. How this, what is the use of this register? This register is an instrument to document your knowledge which is on the verge of erosion and it is a tool synthesize the community their ownership on the way and uh, if it is a document they can claim rights, intellectual property right on that. This is the basis actually that for with that protection can be can be gar not guaranteed but I mean like there's always that fine line between okay if we document the knowledge then it's there in hard form and it becomes easier for others to access it right and then it's how do you protect that. Um, on the flip side of that, however, it's, if it's documented and it's under community control, it also becomes a platform for advocating for rights. Like, we've charted the traditional use of this land, this area, these medicines back this many generations that, you know, in, in a legal court, that gives you a really strong foundation for arguing that we, this, we have intellectual rights over this, we have, you know, community rights over this. So the way that the registers have been really useful is by documenting that and then you can fight against like multinational companies who come in. Um, but the register must stay within the, the community. 